Hello, my name is Ariel, and today I'll be talking about the future of Hawaiian Airlines. In 1910, just seven years after the Wright brothers' first few flights, aviation came to the Hawaiian Islands. In the beginning, aviation in the Pacific was deemed too hazardous due to the erratic and violent wind currents. In February 1917, the 6th Aero Squadron Commander, Captain John F. Curry, arrived in Honolulu and established permanent air operations out of Fort Kamehameha. This was only the beginning of aviation in the Pacific. Today, Hawaiian Airlines is the largest airline in the state of Hawaii. It is based in Honolulu and is the 10th largest commercial airline in the U.S. Their main hub can be found at Daniel K. Inouye International Airport on the island of Oahu. For many years, Hawaiian, United, Delta, and American Airlines were the only major airlines to fly between the continental United States and Hawaii. As low-cost and bare-bones fares continued to grow in popularity across the continental United States, this seemed like it would never be an option for islanders. The core problem facing the Pacific region is one of low density and remoteness. The region has long been aviation routes, and these are inherently costly to serve. Southwest Airlines, a notorious low-cost carrier, has now broken into the Pacific aviation market, promising to bring its low-cost fare options to Hawaii. On November 11, 2000, sorry, 1929, thousands of people gathered in the city of Honolulu to celebrate the launch of Inter-Island Airway Limited's first passenger flight between the islands of Oahu, Maui, and the Big Island. A little more than a decade after Inter-Island Airways carried their first passengers, the name was changed to what we know today, Hawaiian Airlines. On December 7, 1941, a Hawaiian Airlines passenger plane was struck during the attack on Pearl Harbor causing an engine to explode. Remarkably, a stray bullet also hit an extinguisher, putting out the fire and allowing the plane and the 24 passengers to land without harm. On November 11, 2018, Hawaiian Airlines celebrated its 90th anniversary, and they continue to be a leader in the airline industry. Over the course of 90 years, the brand has held six different logos. It started with the brand name of Inter-Island Airways and changed to the Lili Bird, and new name of Hawaiian Airlines in 1952. In 1966, the Jetbird logo was introduced, then the Paolani logo was introduced in 1973, and between 2001 to 2017, the logo has been redesigned but still holds a similar look to the Maiden's profile that is easily recognized today. Hawaiian Airlines continues to grow not only its immense fleet of passenger airliners, but it has expanded its list of destinations from inter-island to include many destinations in North America, Asia, and the South Pacific. With Hawaiian Airlines, passengers can catch flights to Australia, Japan, the Philippines, New Zealand, and Thailand. They can also travel to more exotic locations such as American Samoa and Tahiti. Hawaiian Airlines boasts island-inspired meals that also incorporate the various international local flavors as well, depending on the destination. Hawaiian Airlines also works with local businesses to offer their products on board to include Lion Coffee, beer from Maui Brewing Company, and a variety of island-style snacks. These island-style snacks may include Kona Chips, Island Princess, and Hawaiian Chip Company from their Pauhana card. By incorporating so many local businesses into their airline, they continue to be an award-winning company. When Southwest Airlines announced its desire to expand into the Hawaiian airline market in October 2017, there was a bit of concern within the Hawaiian Airlines Corporation. Southwest Airlines is notorious for their low-cost airfare, and people were wondering how Hawaiian Airlines was going to compete. For many years, Hawaiian Airlines held an almost monopoly on inter-island flights. Although Hawaiian Airlines kept flight costs affordable, ranging between $100 to $250, the concern was if they could afford to match or beat Southwest Airlines' want-to-get-away average airfare of $100 or less. When Southwest Airlines enters a market, it experiences the Southwest effect. This is when the average price of airfares tends to drop once Southwest begins their services. One-way average market fares are $45 lower when Southwest serves a market non-stop than when it does not. 
Beckenstein and Campbell found the Southwest effect provides an additional market fare reduction of 15% and a corresponding traffic increase of 28-30% to 30% from the introduction of non-stop service by Southwest. How can Hawaiian Airlines compete with the Southwest effect? The first alternative Hawaiian Airlines could make is to offer more amenities at no additional cost. They could offer double air miles on flights between islands. Including free Wi-Fi, free in-flight entertainment, or snacks could also come included in all price points. This would add more value to the flight for the customer. Some customers shop based on the maximum benefit per cost. By including extra amenities, the customer might feel like they're making more bang for their buck. The second alternative is to match Southwest Airlines prices. Southwest Airlines has announced they will offer $29 one-way inter-island fares and $99 one-way fares between Sacramento to Honolulu and Oakland to Kona. By matching fares, Hawaiian Airlines would be a viable competitor for passengers that shop purely based on the cost of the ticket. The next alternative is to implement a program like Southwest's Want to Get Away deals. Southwest Airlines want to get away fares are a non-refundable, low-cost fare that still offer two check bags free and additional charges for same-day standby. Hawaiian Airlines can create their own program called Ohana Fares. In this program, customers will be able to prepay six one-way fares to lock in a price for use within 365 days from date of purchase. The tickets will be valid on inter-island flights only and must be booked no less than 48 hours in advance. These fares will be bare bones, meaning no advanced seat assignments and no carry-on luggage allowed. Passengers will still have the option to bring a personal item at no additional cost and pay for a checked bag at the regular $25 fee. There would be no restrictions on destinations within the Hawaiian Islands. The last alternative is to do nothing. If Hawaiian Airlines chooses to do nothing, they can expect a loss in profits. Southwest has already announced they will be offering one-way inter-island flights for $29. If a passenger can purchase two tickets at that price, creating a round-trip itinerary, the airfare cost would be $58 plus taxes and fees. This is 58 to 77% lower than Hawaiian Airlines' current inter-island airfare prices. With the projected increase in travelers at 28-30% to 30 due to the Southwest effect, this has the potential to have a large impact on Hawaiian Airlines profits. Hawaiian Airlines' best approach to compete with the Southwest effect is to implement their own low fare program. By creating Ohana fares, Hawaiian Airlines can continue to maintain brand loyalty. Most passengers on inter-island flights are locals and business personnel, many repeat travelers. Travelers nowadays tend to prefer multiple and short holidays as opposed to traditional long stays, while also the loss of the glamour associated with flying, and hence the supply of lower service levels, is accepted by many travelers. By creating a bundle deal on flights, passengers can lock in a guaranteed price. Businesses would be incentivized to purchase several blocks of flights in advance for their business needs. Local travelers can purchase advanced tickets at a discounted price for personal and leisure travel. The data collected from the advanced ticket purchases has the potential to provide Hawaiian Airlines with inserts on market demands, as well as forecasting future profits. Ohana fares can be implemented in six months. In the first month, Hawaiian Airlines will need to build a team for research and development of the Ohana fares program. The team should focus on researching the Southwest effect and other low-cost carriers to develop an understanding of the LCC business model. In the second month, with a full understanding of the LCC business model, the team should begin to outline the Ohana Fares program. The team should focus on the product details and potential ad advertisement of the new program. The team should create a focus group to test the public's reaction to this program and generate feedback on customer likes and dislikes. In month three, the Ohana Fares team will need to begin working with the web development department to discuss the implementation of the program and what is needed to integrate it into our existing website. The team will also need to work closely with the marketing department to begin advertising the Ohana Fares program and generate interest with the public. In month four, the web development program, sorry, the web development department will finalize the product integration and test the system to find any potential hiccups. 
the Ohana Fairs team will meet with another focus group to test the customer response to the final product. The marketing department will continue to advertise the upcoming program. By month five, customer service and IT staff will be trained on the program details so they can be ready to answer customer questions and address any potential issues. A soft rollout of the program will be implemented to further test the system. Hawaiian Airlines can give its elite members early access to the Ohana Fair program. By the sixth month, the full Ohana Fairs program will be rolled out and offered to customers. The updated Hawaiian Airlines website will be made available at midnight on the day of launch. Additional IT staff will be ready to address any unforeseen issues with the influx of web traffic to the website. The airline industry in Hawaii is changing. Hawaiian Airlines has faithfully served the Hawaiian people for 90 years. The low-cost carrier option has arrived with the introduction of Southwest Airlines into the market. Cost reduction is no longer a short-term response to declining yields or falling load factors. It is a continued and permanent requirement if airlines are being profitable. The best option for Hawaiian Airlines to adapt to this change is to create their own low-fare style program to compete against Southwest Airlines' notorious want-to-get-away fares. I believe this option can be rolled out within six months, just in time for summer when most people begin to take vacations. Thank you.